welcome. Today is Tuesday, October 29th, 2024. This is a public hearing before the Massachusetts Gaming Commission relative to the application for a license to hold or conduct a racing meeting for calendar year 2025 submitted by Plainville Gaming and Redevelopment LLC. I will refer to them as PGR as we move forward. Uh, my name is Jordan Maynard and I am the chair of the Gaming Commission. I'm joined today by Commissioners Eileen O'Brien, uh, Brad Hill, and Nikisha Skinner. As you may know, the Commission has authority to issue a license to hold or conduct a racing meeting for calendar year 2025 to PGR. The public support for this proposal, or lack thereof, is a factor that the Commission will evaluate in making the final award of the licensee. Accordingly, your presence here today and the written comments you have submitted will play an important role in our decision. I thank you for being part of this process. Before we begin the public hearing, I would like to lay out the process and establish the ground rules we will follow today. This hearing is being held in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 128A, Section 3, and Chapter 30A, Section 20. This hearing is intended to afford an opportunity to offer input and comment on the application to any entity or member of the public who is interested in doing so. The hearing will begin with a presentation by the applicant. After the presentation, we will open the floor to public comments. At the conclusion of the comments from the members of the public, we will afford the applicant an opportunity to make any closing comments it would like to make. Any commissioner may at any time ask any question the applicant or anyone else. In an effort to make the best use of all of our time, we ask that any member of the public proceed as follows in addressing the commission. First, there will be an opportunity for members of the public to address the commission. If you registered to speak on the commission's website by 4 p.m. yesterday, your name has already been added to the list. We will begin with the names from that list. If there is time remaining, we will open the floor to comments from any other community member present who signed up in person today when they arrived. Second, when I call your name, please approach the microphone, state your name, and tell us the town where you are from or the agency you represent. Third, in order to ensure that everyone who wants to speak gets an opportunity to do so, we ask that you please limit your comments to three minutes in length. Fourth, if you have a question that you would like the applicant to address, please address, address the question to me uh, I will then direct the applicant to respond appropriately. Finally, we recognize the great passion that many of, many of you have for this subject matter. However, in order for this part of the process to achieve its highest value, it is tremendously important that the discourse here today remain civil. For those who have submitted written comments about this application, please note that the Commission will review and consider each and every one of them. Thank you for taking the time to send them in. With that, I will ask the applicant to please identify its representatives and begin its presentation. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. I have the pleasure of being the first one to call you, Mr. Chairman. That's an honor. Mr. Smith, thank you for being here today uh, in Plainville, where, the where my application for racing uh, is conducted. <coughs> this is the application for the 27th uh, season of racing at Plainville, which started in 1999. This is the 25th application that I have submitted uh, personally. Uh, this past year, 2024, the season has gone very well. Uh, we we uh, submitted for 110 days. It looks like we're going to do 108 because we did cancel a couple of days due to heat and uh, thunder. Uh, actually, that, that car was actually canceled in the middle of it. Uh, we had that thunderstorm, so we canceled the remainder of the car. <coughs> Um, we are, incidentally, we are the only licensee that uh, we simulcast as well, and we're the only licensee where our license is tethered to the simulcasting process. Uh, we have to do at least 100 days, so we're going to meet that obligation this year to do the simulcasting. We're also the only licensee that appears before you annually for our racing days. Um, we have, since 1999, I've been involved since 1999 with the project, although I've only been on the other side for only 25 years. <laughs> but um, we have, we, the, the, back in 1999 when the racing first came to Plainville, it was obvious that we needed to be involved in the community and we've been involved in the community and support the town 
in every way we can. Uh, we've become a, a fabric of the, of the community here through the service organizations, the Rotary Clubs, the, actually a new one that's the Habitat for Humanity, um, the, uh, uh, the Lions Club, which I'm involved in. Uh, one of my pet uh, projects, which I'm a community member of, is the Brentham Plainville and Norfolk Lions Polar Plunge, which in uh, early April we plunged, we jumped into Lake Pro and water's pretty cold. I got out of it this past year because of my ankle injury last year, but I'm gonna hope to go in this year, so. <laughs> um, but also there's a lot of local farms around here that supply us with uh, horses and uh, the participants that live on those farms and breed horses and train them here in the local communities, as well as all around the state. We are an agribusiness uh, supporting hay farms, uh, uh, feed stores, veterinarians, blacksmiths, all throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, at the, at the uh, track itself, uh, we have 50 plus jobs that are directly uh, responsible for the racing, um, as well as other departments that support the racing uh, in the casino, which is you know, the housekeeping and facilities and things like that. But 50 jobs directly associated with the racing. <clears throat> Very proud of a lot of the employees that we have there. Uh, one of them is here today that you know, uh, Lenny Calderon, the voice of language. He's been there since 1999. Um, a, lot of our, a lot of our employees, a lot of the uh, paramedic clerks that we have took bets on the first uh, race at Plainridge in 1999. So we're very proud of them. And a lot of the, uh, the paramedic clerks that have come through have now advanced over to the sports wagering. Uh, we have uh, a couple that have done that have transferred over there, uh, doing a very good job doing ticket writing in sports in sports wagering. Um, we also have a lot of jobs that are direct for the racing itself. Uh, the hundreds of jobs, with owners, trainers, drivers, brewers that uh, supply the horses that race with us all the time. Um, <coughs> I think we're going to hear today from uh, I thought the uh, representative from the Horsemen's Association was going to be here, but I don't see her yet. Uh, the, the Breeders Association, the Police and Fire, and one of our esteemed citizens of Plainville has been a support of us for quite some time. Uh, one thing I would like to mention about the, uh, the Horsemen's Association and the Breeders, um, they have been very supportive of events at Plainbridge, our Spirit of Mass uh, Racing Day they're very involved in. And uh, it's become a, a very good day for us locally as well as nationally. It's got a lot of attention nationally. Uh, just uh, recently, last week, uh, the uh, breast cancer awareness uh, fundraiser that we had, um, they, they both associations stepped up individually and collectively. Uh, there were very substantial donations to that effort, and we're very proud of that. So I hope you look forward, uh, I look, hope you look favorable on our application this year. Of course, we'll hit more on November 7th, but that's just an overview of where we are in the town. And uh, how glad we are to be in the town. Commissioners, any questions for Steve? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So do we want to take these in order and we signed up? Yeah. Let's stay away. All right. Nancy, I think you're first on the list. Oh. Well, please introduce yourself <laughs> and make your comments. Sure. For the record. Sure. Uh, my name is Nancy Longabardi, and I represent the Stanford Breeders Program, um, which we just completed our races last week. We had a great um, season again, a really good participation, a lot of breeders, um, new breeder stakes, and we just um, have had great um, participation from the track, all the officials, uh, Dr. Lightbomb's staff for several years with all of our testing. Um, for our horses for the races, and we anticipate another good season next year. So we would be in support of the racing application for Plain Ridge. It's um, good for our breeders, for their investments, and our members, and also our fellow horsemen and women. Thank you. Question, Chairman? Yes. yes. Um, no questions. Okay. One of, th one of thanks is what I'm going to oh, say. okay. Thank you for having us out uh, oh. earlier this year. I, I can only speak for myself, but I think I speak for the whole commission when I say I learned more on that day about horse racing than I had the two years previous uh, to my appointment. You were, you were so not only generous with your time, 
but generous with information for us to understand this horse racing industry here in Massachusetts as it is now currently uh, running. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to this, and I don't think the public understands that. And for at least me, being new-ish uh, to this industry, there's a lot to learn, and boy, you took care of me that day in terms oh, of you. information, as did your nephew. Yes. Um, not only did you show us the horses and the stables and how the economic piece of it means to the racing industry that you brought up, but you also uh, enlightened us on other parts of the racing industry that we did not know. And it was very informative. And I appreciate you taking that time out and educating us that day. It was a beautiful day. Um, I think I've learned more in this year about horse racing than I, as I said, as I had <coughs> leading up to this. Uh, and we've tried, you know, to get as much information. Mm -hmm. Steve, you know, every time we have a question about the horse racing, Steve, you, you're there with the information. But that particular day was right on, and boy, did you hit the, uh, oh, the spots that we needed to learn about the industry, inside and out. So thank you. It was, uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. It was really, it was a pleasure for us to have you. We enjoyed it, Dominic and myself. So, and we would love to have you come back again. And, and all, yeah, I, all I talked about, other spring. than the horses, spring. was that beautiful dog of yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, God. my wife and my daughter are oh. big dog people. Thank you, yeah. When I, I took a picture, yes. I said, take a look at this That's dog. That's my boy, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. He has a good little life over there, too. So. Uh, but thank you all for coming, because I know you have a really busy schedule, so we appreciated you coming out and taking the time, and I'm glad that we were able to the more we teach learn, you a lot, you know, let you know a lot questions. about it. And so, yeah. Yeah. thank I, you. I, I want to come out in the spring. I'd love to okay. see them. Okay. They're, they're for sure. just the ones that we saw. We should I'm have see them earlier. five new babies yeah. in the spring, spread out yeah. Yeah. a little time. So, yeah. we'd love to have you again. So, Our best thank you. Little yeah. Dominic. There's a little and a big Dominic, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and little Dominic, yes, he, he really enjoyed it too. He, he loves that. He's very, very um, involved, loves it. Um, so it was, it was great for him. So thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming. All right. With that, uh, the next person on our list, uh, someone we're very familiar with, Dale. Oh, let me see Steve is, and I'm going to take a walk up there real slow because I'm a senior, so <laughs> great comment, thank you. And if you'll please introduce yourself sure. for the record. Sure, Dale Bergevine, lifelong resident of Pineville, been there 66 years, um, and nothing but high recommendations for Steve and the whole casino. Um, give an example, last year we ran a, I usually run a food drive at a Christmas party, um, and they stood up and helped, and they did a donation to the food pantry, and really nothing they're just a great partner in this community. They just can't say enough. You pick up the phone, you call him, he answers the phone, and he delivers every time. So I just, a great, great community. Uh, he helps out the community, and uh, he's a great leader in this, this, this town. So you call, they help. That's really it. And welcome to, welcome to Pine Hill. And you get to see a, uh, you know, safety building. And, and I hate to say it, but Playing with Spock, casino pays for all of this, so it's, it's really, really <laughs> nice for us. Really nice for us seniors who came before taxes. So. <laughs> What's that? I think sure there's no questions for you, Dad. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, I was, uh, that was a mic drop moment. <laughs> I will say, I, I always know it's Halloween coming up when I see Dale every year. So this is third year in a row, right before Halloween. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. You should have came with one of my Christmas parties. So enjoy that. <laughs> Thank so, you. I didn't know where you were going with that with the hell. I, 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 I was looking up and down. I don't know. It's like this is going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Dale. Um, with that, we are going to turn it to uh, Chief Floyd. Chief Floyd. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Health uh, Thank you for coming today to our facility, much like Dale alluded to, uh, with our Plain Ridge partnership. Um, I don't think we'd be here at the same facility. Um, the facility at Plainbridge has been kind of a, a cornerstone of our community, not only financially, but as um, Steve alluded to, um, they recognize the nuances of our community and build a community all the way down to going to a, a local residence Christmas party for a food drive. Um, and then the larger things such as a Rotary Club and Lions Club. Um, I can only say that it's been a pleasure to serve them as a, as a chief of police, um, they're very responsive to anything we have 
um, to bring to them, and we find resolution by some means without <coughs> any issue at all. So I'm in support of this application as well. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the Chief? If I can entertain you for one second, um, because of Plain Ridge, we also are also able to do the grant type things, and I don't get to do the show and tell with you much, but one thing we do have for this grant, and we actually just got them in that I have them here, is what they call key lights. So it replaces traditional road flares that go on fire. Um, obviously, I couldn't demonstrate a road flare in this building for obvious reasons, especially with a deputy I, chief I, being I in the room. That. <laughs> <laughs> I would give it a whirl, but I, I certainly would be in trouble. But to give you an idea, it's a road flare, it sits in every cruiser. And at the end of the day, all you do is simply just pull it off, place it down, and every time you pull it off, it sinks with the next flare. And people will say, why do you need that? Well, during the nighttime, when people are looking for a direction to go, they literally sink. So if we have seven or eight cruises, literally, each one of these packs will, can be lined up, we can block up intersections, anything, and even before somebody gets to that intersection, it can give you a direction of travel. It can reverse the opposite direction with a standard holding pattern. Um, at the end of the day, everybody can hold this, I can walk away with this, people can drive over it, and it's not gonna affect the operation of this. Whereas road flares causes a whole bunch of different issues when it comes down to hazards and things like that. Not to mention just holding just out on the street. That's it. So, uh, Commissioner, I would say, Chief, first of all, that's really cool. I now want a set of those myself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I will let Chief, uh, Chief Delaney and, and Lily and Mary know. They're actually setting up for another event we're doing later today. Absolutely. But uh, that this is good use of funds. I will probably be there as well. I have oh. one stop in between, but I can bring my, my show and follow along. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. We Thank love you to see that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, with that, we have um, our... Uh, Plainville Town Administrator, Mr. Noble. Good to see you again. Good to see you, and thank you to the Commission and the Chairman for visiting Plainville yet again on the issue. You are very warm welcome as usual. Uh, I appear before you in support of the license request. Steve O'Teal and his team have been a welcome addition to our community. They are very good partners. They don't place an, a burden on our town resources or our public safety response. I've actually received no complaints in my office whatsoever uh, on any subject related to uh, the racing, and uh, I think this is a welcome addition to our community life in the town, and we support uh, wholeheartedly the application. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for me, Mr. Noble? And we need more toys. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. All right, with that, we're going to go over to uh, Chief Moore. Now, can we bring the flares out or not? <laughs> <laughs> Those ones, yes. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, to echo the, uh, the opinion of uh, Chief Floyd, thank you very much to Flamish Park for this facility. It's, it's great thing to have. Um, the Plainville Plain Fire Department fully endorses uh, Mr. O'Toole for his gaming license. Uh, Plainville Park is Mr. O'Toole, they are, they are shared community stakeholders. Anytime we've ever needed anything, I know I can give him a call and he'll always answer the phone and do his best to accommodate us. Never had a problem up there before. Uh, and like I said, they are, they are shared community stakeholders and they're always there for us. Questions? Thank you. And thank you for the tour we got last year, too. Um, with that, the next person on our list is uh, uh, Select Person Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome to Plainville, uh, distinguished members of the Commission. I'll be brief. Uh, we have a wonderful partner in Plain Ridge. Uh, I've been a member of the Select Board for seven years. I've lived in the community for 34 years. I can remember the discussions in the 90s before they came to town to bring horse racing and all the fears that many in the community had. None of those fears and all of the promises of good things, um, the promises materialized, the fears did not. We have not had problems with them. They have been a partner with us through good times and bad in the community, uh, whether it be helping out our local youth 
uh, activities, helping with charitable events in town, supporting us through the pandemic, working with our horse farms and the horse farms in the region. Uh, they have been the kind of partner you dream of uh, from, a, from a citizen's position, from a town's position. And uh, we would we wholeheartedly support uh, this application. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Johnson? Thank you. I can appreciate it. Um, so that's come to the end of the sign-up sheet. I do want to open it up to make sure that we didn't miss anybody on the sign-up sheet. And that is anything to say. Steve, would you like to make any closing remarks? I would. Yes. I'd like to thank everybody who spoke uh, so highly of me, even though uh, it's not true. <laughs> uh, we really do have it. The, it's not overstated the relationship that we have with the with the town. I've known these guys. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Chief Floyd and I were reminiscing earlier about uh, application hearings that were held at '99 and 2000, where they were very ruckus, and nothing like today's hearing. Uh, Chief Moore, I've known him for a long time. I know he's a He's, he's, he's passionate about what he does. He's served so many times uh, on the rescue that comes to the track to oversee the race, and he's done a great job. And we just really appreciate all the support we have in the town. And, and even you know, the, the people that uh, are citizens of the town that come to the track, uh, we know how much they appreciate us, and we, we try to look after them as we can. Um, the, the, the one thing that I did want to touch on that, that I touched on a little bit was about uh, our employees, and I missed a couple of uh, <clears throat> lifelong employees that we've had at the track, and one is uh, uh, my race secretary who puts the races together. He's been there 26 years as well. Um, and our turnover rate, at the, our retention rate is fantastic. We have a really good retention rate. It's very difficult in the racing business because of the uh, expertise and the licenses that need to be held to be a race secretary, a judge, a starter, you know, all, all those things. So, uh, and, you know, the only place that we can draw from, from is, you know, upstate New York, uh, uh, the city, Yonkers, uh, Maine, and it's very tough to lure those officials from those places where they live. We have had judges travel to us as far as New Jersey and New York, uh, but they usually move on back to the tracks they that are closer to their homes. But right now, we have a really good nucleus of judges that we've cultivated. Um, and I mentioned uh, Lenny. Andrew is sitting next to Lenny. Andrew's been fantastic. Uh, mutual manager for us, which is a difficult position to understand uh, tote and simulcasting and all the things that go along with it. Uh, and they, between Lenny and Andrew, uh, racing, uh, the racing operation is everyone is cross -trained. So if if there's a deficit in our, uh, our employees where they won't call out sick or whatever, they jump in. Anybody can jump in and get a person's job. And they've really done a great job. I appreciate everybody that's here, and I appreciate them especially. I appreciate you for coming to Plainville and hearing the application. I look forward to seeing you on November 7th. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Steve. I will take this time to say um, thank you to our own Dr. Lightbound and her team who and yeah. deal with those licenses and licensing and get everybody ready and she's always proud of everything that goes on there. So thank you, Dr. Life. One of the reasons that there isn't uh, too many issues at claiming is because of Taco and Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Commissioners, any further questions? All right. Any additional participants? Okay. Seeing no additional participants and hearing no other requests to provide substantive comments to the Commission regarding PGR's racing application, we will now close this hearing. I thank you all for your time and your contributions today. Have a good day. It's a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you.